ourselves at the home of the world's first retractable natural grass field as you get a look inside State Farm Stadium in Glendale. Today, we've got a solid matchup in store in the NFC as it'll be the New York Giants taking on the Arizona Cardinals. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Now the NFC's leading rusher a season ago. Here's Saquon Barkley. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. They'll go to Barkley again, and he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. Not too many more ideal situations in second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now Jones. Finding Sterling Shepard for his first catch. So they'll get eight out of that completion. And they'll be left with second and a couple. So they give up the completion there. But defensively, Charles, you're going up against a quarterback here who's had some moments, but really a lot of ups and downs in the early part of his career. What's the plan against a guy like this? Well, you want to rattle him first and foremost. Bring some people at him, a couple extra guys in the pocket, see if he can handle it. The second thing, you want to make him think. Show him one look, go to another, disguise a few things, make him throw into what you call your defensive traps and try and make some good plays on the ball and get a few takeaways. Well, this is an awfully tough route to defend in man coverage because he lines up on the right and then runs a crossing route back to the other side of the field. So as a defender, you're not only trailing him the whole way, you're also looking out for your own guys to make sure you don't get yourself picked off. And then you can't catch up in time to prevent the completion. So the completion gets him just a yard at its second down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved. Just as you said, they want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. Throwing Jones. They'll set up the screen to Barkley. They juked him. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals 23. A gain of 18 and a new set of downs. And as you're game planning as a staff, you go through all the different ways you can neutralize the other guy's pass rushers. Extra linemen, leave a tight end in, bring the running backs back in to block. Or you can do this, a little simple screen pass, and it works to perfection. Throw right side, taken in by Bellinger. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Three yards remain for second down. Back to throw again. Another pass complete to Bellinger. And the Giants are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical, they've been crisp, and as a reward, they're gonna be set up with an early first and goal. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. They'll try and run for it with Barkley. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. Here's where we need to see some tenacity from this defense because they've been pushed right down the field on this opening drive. They've got to find some way to push back, and that's a good first step. Second and goal from inside the five. Barkley again. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Saquon Barkley. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Giants are on the board first here this afternoon. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal 
They've got to like the way that they started this ball game. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. On the return, Rondell Moore will bring it out. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Now the veteran workhorse. Here's James Conner. And not much doing there. Maybe a yard up to the 23. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. Connor going to get it again on second down. Takes this to the 27. Give him four yards. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. And five in the secondary now for the Giants on third down. Now McCoy. He's got his target. That's Zach Paschal. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. It goes as a gain of six, and it's a first down. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. Well, that was his first target of the game, and it's going to take at least one more target to get him on the board. Took a nice, substantial hit to jar that catch loose from him. Incomplete pass. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's McCoy. Oh, Pascal able to haul that one in. 22 yards there, a first down. On first and 10 is Connor, and he'll work down inside the 45. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two, and that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight, now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. From the 44-yard line, here's a second and eight. They stay on the ground. Here's Connor again. Trucks over him. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. 15 yards that time, and the Cardinals move the chains. Good pickup by Connor, such an easy player to root for. And in 2022, he really meant a great deal to the Cardinals offense with almost 800 yards rushing. His veteran presence, invaluable, as they went through a bunch of changes on offense. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. Buried behind the line by Aziz Ojolari. Ojolari continuing to look like a real presence for the Giants. Five and a half sacks and three forced fumbles in only seven games in 2022. Let's see what the pace looks like for him if he's able to avoid the injury bug. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Back in Arizona, second quarter action. It's the Cardinals in possession. Now they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. Back to throw. McCoy. He's going to look deep down the field. He's got his man. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. 
Zach Pascal, 40 yards. And the Cardinals are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. Well, that's what I call an answer right there. They gave up a sack on the previous play. How about what they did to finish things off, turning it right back around? That's the response, and that O-line feels a lot better now, don't they? Yeah, without a doubt, because give up the sack in the previous play, that just hurts those guys, because they never want to see their guy get hit. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 here as the kick's away. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive that they watched the other side just score. But remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. And this is into the hands of Campbell downfield. 36 yards on the play. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. Jones fakes the give to Barkley. Looking for Shepard deep. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. I like the thought process there. They connected on a big play, and sometimes you find the defense vulnerable. So they went for the bigger shot, went for it all on that one. This time, they were ready for it. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. To throw again, Jones. The cards get to him here. He's brought down for a sack. Rashard Lawrence. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. And every game we talk about what are going to be the keys as we go into it. Maybe that's a key for their defense today. Pressure the quarterback and make sure you play a good zone defense behind them and they get their first sack of the contest. Throwing on third and long. Jones. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, that play was certainly a little bit different because on the previous play, he was sacked. This time, protection a lot better. Had time to survey the field and still couldn't find an open receiver. On fourth down, Jamie Gillen on to punt for the Giants. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Arizona's offense at the line, ready to get their drive started. For this offense, Charles, remember the last time they were out here, marched it nearly the full length of the football field, and a lot of the attack went through the air, so now they're seeing if they can duplicate that performance. Okay, if I show my age a little bit, partner, because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie, when you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. But the way the game's being played now, this is just part of what they do. So I don't think they should change anything at all. They've been dominant. Keep throwing it around. From the 47, it's second and five. They'll toss this out right for Connor. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. 
A Cardinal first down on a gain of 13. His first carry and their second drive, pretty solid. And, of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hurtling through them. On first and 10, McCoy to Connor on the check down. Just a gain of a couple there. And it's second down. Operating from the gun, McCoy. A good throw here, finding Pascal. A gain of 28 yards there and give him a first down. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he's got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. Out of the shotgun, they'll run with Connor. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Now second and five. Snap will come from the six. Again, it's Connor. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Looking to throw. McCoy toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. Another shot from the one on second and goal. A run here with McBride. And he will get into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. Trey McBride taking it in from a yard out. And the Cardinals have taken the lead. All drives that result in points hurt a defense. But when they are the sustained variety, play after play, and they just can't get off the field and stop them, that can be demoralizing. Extra point good by Prater, and that makes the score 14 to 7. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. Taken at the goal line. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. That 7-0 lead of theirs short-lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they can get this game tied up. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. Back to throw, Jones. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air and defensively. They were aware of that and certainly were prepared on that throw. An incomplete pass on second down. That muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. 
Partner, what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks. On fourth down, here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. Fair catch called for and made at about the 32-yard line. Ready to go with their next drive and at the line, the Cardinal offense. Now their last two drives, both ending in touchdowns, it's gotten them this 14-7 lead. And it looks to me, and I think you're probably seeing the exact same thing, they're in an ideal spot now to create some separation. The way that they're functioning on offense now, they can create a pretty good gap, allows their defense to play with a little more verve and confidence. A yeah, big article in the paper this morning about them stringing possessions together for consecutive touchdowns. Well, right here, they're trying to make it three in a row. To throw on second and ten, McCoy. And that one into the hands of Brown downfield. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. On first down, McCoy. That's into the hands of Pascal. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. McCoy's throw here complete into the hands of Ertz. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. From the 25 on second down, McCoy. This will be caught by Brown. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Ertz has it left side. Touchdown, Cardinals! Zach Ertz, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Cardinals will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. Well, we know someone just added to his touchdown passing total, but all he did was get the ball out quickly to his tight end and let him take care of business the rest of the way. Prater for the extra point, and it's now 21 to 7.
After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. Here's Jones on first and 10. Steps away to his left and avoids the contact by sliding. The Giants are going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Looking to throw. Jones. And this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Back to throw. Jones. Got an open man. That's Campbell. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Ten yards, good for a giant first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. Open target here, Darius Slayton. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and ten. They'll look to throw again. It's hauled in by Shepard. The Giants going to burn their third and final timeout as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. This will be spotted just shy of midfield, a 59-yard attempt. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this will remain a two-touchdown game. Arizona's offense at the line, ready to get their drive started. And maybe a chance for a quick completion and then a long field goal try. We'll see. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Ball placed at the 45 for second and five. Operating from the gun, McCoy. That one thrown away from the pocket. The officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. And that's the knowledge you gain from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. He's got the leg, but it's no good. He missed it right, and this will remain a two-touchdown game. So that would have been something from that distance, but to no avail. Comes up empty as we have reached the intermission. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. And no run back here for more. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25. Ready to go with their next drive, and at the line, the Cardinal offense. 
As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember that first half, good through the air and really all around an outstanding offensive performance. Absolutely. They reached the end zone several times. The passing game working awfully well. And most importantly, partner, yeah, they went into the tunnel with a lead. They come back out with that lead. Absolutely. NFL coaches, we know they're perfectionists in a lot of ways, but they had to like what they saw in that first half. Off the play fake. McCoy. This will be caught downfield by Moore. 27 yards there, a first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. And he stopped immediately there. And the tackle there by Micah McFadden. If this defense wants to stay in this ball game, they've got to start ending some drives. That helps. And they have to look ahead at what they expect the offense to do. And right now with that lead, that's run the football. So you don't just stack the line of scrimmage. You have to get upfield and try and make some plays in their backfield. Connor going to get it again on second down. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Looking to throw. McCoy. That's complete to his running back, Connor. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. Forced out to his left, and he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a halt. Ball on the 27. Here's second down and five. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And this will be swung out here for counter. Only able to gain a couple there. And now we've got a third and four. Back to throw. McCoy. Zach Ertz has it complete. Touchdown. Zach Ertz with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Cardinals take a three touchdown lead. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors. But that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Extra point good by Prater. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. This fielded right at the goal line. Oh, a good return up past the 30. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, still a good return. They'll start the drive right around the 37. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. 
A pretty good looking run there on first down. That'll go for nine yards just short of the line to gain. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Second down, here's Barkley again. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Another modest gain there on that one. And I think, Charles, you can probably pin part of the deficit on a failure on their part to really get this ground game established. Yeah, and they've really struggled to be multidimensional in this one, haven't they, partner? Because they have to be extremely one-dimensional now if they hope to get back into this game. They have to do it by throwing the football and hope to have success through the air. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second and four. Jones with a handoff to Barkley. Oh, and that one well designed as he'll take this down to the 30-yard line. He'll get 15 and a Giants first down. They held him in check in the first half, but that's his longest carry of the game right there. So would this be the definition of fresh legs since he didn't get much done in the first half? Now he has a great opportunity. He's taking full advantage of it. They keep it with Barkley on first down. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. This defense, tough to run against. And those linebackers, they'll go side to side up the field, and there they get them for no gain. If you can't get linemen upfield to the second level to occupy them, they have a field day just running to the football and putting ball carriers on the ground. Not many yards after contact when they wrap up like that. And he's able to work his way down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. 10 yards, good for a giant first down. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they stouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. Throwing Jones. And they're not able to hook up there, incomplete. Wait, if you're going to give out a little applause on that play, it has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Phoenix, Arizona is the spot. Glad to have you along for the ride. Third quarter action and a second and ten upcoming. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. You've got to figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. That ball caught by Campbell, and he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash, dropped at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just need the tip of the ball to cross the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. Now Jones, and that is caught. He's got it for a giant touchdown. Darius Slayton. A one-yard touchdown reception. And the Giants are able to cut into this deficit here in the final minute of the third. Gano for the extra point. It's up and good, and it's now 28 to 14. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Arizona's offense at the line, ready to get their drive started. Their lead down from 21 to 14, but still sitting in a great spot, up two scores here in the third quarter. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. I don't know what this says about me, but I love successful runs up the middle when the blocking is so well executed like that. And it doesn't matter whether it's zone blocking, whether it's a power scheme. When you have a blocker on a defender and then the running back can read it, find the proper hole and just go, it's sometimes a thing of beauty. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And uh, who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. McCoy. This is Ertz on the pitch and catch. He's been big. Two touchdowns earlier. Now he's got a first down here. So both teams trade touchdowns in the third as we're through three quarters of play. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. From the gun, a give to Connor. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Big Leonard Williams, the one who came in and got him. That's a nice job there, foiling what all offenses try to do, which is control the defensive end in the running game. They want to get to the outside, and if he keeps himself free, stays on his feet, he can make a play just as he did there. Now McCoy. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Have to give some credit to the defender on that when he read all of his keys perfectly and got a great break on the ball and able to force that incompletion. The Cardinals on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third down and 12. And he can't get away from the pressure. The Giants get there. The pressure from multiple guys there as they bury him for a big nine-yard loss. Even keeping the back end for extra protection on third down, they still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. On is the putter, Hawk, as he gets this one away. This is taken at about the 14. Call that a 46-yard punt with a net of 40 on the six-yard return. And it'll be giant football first and 10. Jones now. Throwing to start the drive. Got a man open. It's Darren Waller. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. This game just keeps evolving and changing, doesn't it? You got a tight end who can move around a lot. Not necessarily using a big body on him. Sometimes you take a corner, a better cover guy, and put him on him and try and take him out of the game as we've seen in this one. You're exactly right. They've taken him out of the game. That was just his first catch. Big reason they're losing right now. Meanwhile, Jones throw taken in by Slayton. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 17 yards and a giant first down. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Now a play fake here on first down. This one goes out wide for Barkley. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. Now that's the type of play that gives you a chance to win. Nothing forced downfield where you don't have a guy open. Swing it out to the back on maybe even check it down, whatever you want to call it. Gain of five. You're just trying to get four on first down. They're ahead of the chains now. To throw again on second down. Jones, throw left side here complete to Campbell. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. Better. 
Out of the shotgun, they run with Barkley. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Looking to throw, Jones. And he wisely will throw that one away. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there is no way that ball was going to be caught. They'll need to get this to the 38. That's where the first down marker is here on third. Back to throw. Jones looking left side and he's got a man that's Campbell and they're going to have another first down as the tackles made here at the Cardinals 30 17 yards on the pick up there the drive will continue and in a two score game obviously every play every third down like we saw there magnified big pickup it was a huge pickup what they really want though is to not even get to third down they've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible the throw over the middle, taken in. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. From the 23, here's second and two. Back to throw again. That's complete left side to Shepard. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. Has a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal gain. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Looking to throw. Jones. And that falls to the ground incomplete. Well, a nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Once you get into the red zone, space is at a premium for receivers to try and operate and shake themselves free. That one's incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Back to throw. Jones. And he finds Shepard. Touchdown, Giants. Sterling Shepard from 19 yards away. And the Giants have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Gano now to add the extra point. He's got it, and they're back within a touchdown at 28 <laughs> Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. Ready to go with their next drive and at the line, the Cardinal offense. This game has really flipped on its head. Two unanswered touchdowns by the other side, and now... Yeah, they take over here with just a very slim one-score lead. And we've seen this how many times now? Teams get a big lead, 
They go into coast mode, and all of a sudden, they're scrambling and battling for a win down the stretch. They've got to put something together right here. Otherwise, they're in danger of doing the old snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. On second down, Connor looking for space. And not a whole lot there, maybe a yard to the 27. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Has to. You said big third down. I'd put the word big in capital letters here. Here's McCoy. And that nearly the pick that they needed. He couldn't pull it in, though, and it's fourth down. Here's Matt Hawk now as he'll punt it away for the second time. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Giants offense at the line ready to begin their next drive. Now Jones gets this to Bellinger. Not in a position where they absolutely have to rush right now, but they definitely have to pick up the tempo a bit. Now second and four. Jones. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. And now the focus is really clear. They need to get that first down and either get out of bounds or maybe use one of those timeouts. A big play here. Crowd on their feet. Third and four. To throw is Jones. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. If they get a game-changing score on this drive, it's going to be because of plays like that. That run was pure heart. Took it himself, found a way to reset the downs, and advance the ball. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Jones. He'll find his tight end. That's Waller. And remember, field goal does him no good in this situation. You got to think they should be taking some shots for the end zone soon. The Giants going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. This is first and ten. Here's Jones. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a non-stop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. Going right side, he finds Slayton. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Well, this crowd into it now. Third and two. Here's Jones to throw. Able to find Waller. That's complete. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go in the game. Final minute. One timeout remaining. First and ten. Jones looking around. His throw incomplete. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock, 
and let your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Clock at 30 seconds, second and 10. Jones. Flushed out right. And Jones will hit the deck here, and he is able to pick up the first down. The Giants going to burn their third and final timeout. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. Here we go, first and goal. Now Jones. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. A lot of practice time, a lot of thinking goes into two-minute drills, even on the defensive side. So now you want to make sure the guys understand. Continue to be aggressive, but make sure you're smart in doing so. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Back to throw. Being chased out. And he is across and in for the score. And now they can tie the game in the final stages with the extra point. Or they can go for two and go for the win. Yes, sir, that touchdown puts them in striking distance. And let me tell you something, forget being conservative here. Go for it, go for two. Well, going for it on the road. Want to win it right now. Want to win it right now, have the momentum. Go ahead and get it done. Gano for the extra point. And we may very well be headed to overtime. This one, all we could have asked for. All tied, final minute, as the kick's away here. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. They'll come up first and 10 here. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. Now McCoy. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. And we need overtime to decide this one after four quarters of play. We're all even. The extra session in a moment. This is the NFL on EA Sports. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. Well, they fought hard to reach this point, Charles, and now what an opportunity. They've got the ball first, a chance to take this overtime win away from the hostile crowd. And you know, as the quarterback steps into the huddle, the first thing he's telling his team is remember, 
We need six, not three. So we don't need a good drive. Played 16 games and handled over 350 touches, essentially carrying the Giants offense. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. First down, Giants on a pickup of 14. They go with the ground game, pick up the first, now in plus territory. And that changes the whole mentality of a play caller, doesn't it? Once they cross the 50, they feel like they're in the strike zone. All right, You don't have to be in the red zone to take those big shots downfield or go after the end zone. Right now, that might be available to them. And now this first drive in OT continues. Jones throw brought in by Bellinger. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be second down. I like the thought process. I like the design, but I think he may have waited a little too long to spot his man because if you're going to run that drag route, you've got to put it on him and let him turn up field. Instead, he waits until his receiver's too close to the sideline, and they don't get the yards after the catch. Throwing Jones. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Campbell. And now following the completion, we're going to get a stoppage here for an injury. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They go back to the ground now with Barkley. And able to get this to the 31. They've had some success here in overtime on this opening drive running the football. Right back to that well. And why not? When you have that kind of success, make them stop you. And until they do, keep going back to that well you just spoke about. I think there's more water there and available to them. From the 31, here's a second and eight. Again, it's Barkley, and he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. And they need five yards on third down here to keep this opening drive of OT alive. Looking to throw, Jones. He'll get this out to Barkley complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. 18 yards, a big pickup there on third down. That last pass puts him over 300 yards now in the game. More importantly, though, big first down here in OT. And the team around him has a lot of confidence now after picking up that first down. Everyone seems a little more energized. But did I hear you before the game call in and say, this is my quarterback for your fantasy <laughs> league because he just gave you a good stat, didn't he? He did, and I appreciate it. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that will bring up second down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settling because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defense. And he is in for the score. And it is absolute stun silence here as they win it on the road in overtime. As the fans exit back out through the turnstiles, not happy looks on their faces. Feel like they probably let this one slip away at home in overtime. I would agree with that, and, and their unhappiness hurts the guys at the concession stands on the way out, right? <laughs> not stopping to buy something for the kids. They just want to get home. But what a dramatic way to finish this bad boy off. I mean, this game was dramatic all the way through. That's why we got to overtime. And then to go ahead and finish it this way, the fans streaming out unhappy, but the team that came in here and won this one on the road, they sprinted to their locker room. And speaking of buying things, dinner on you tonight, David. I kind of figured that was coming.
Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. And Moore, he's going to sit on this one, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Arizona's offense at the line, ready to get their drive started. Now a first throw here in overtime. This is Ertz on the pitch and catch. They'll wind up getting just a yard, and that'll bring up second down. Operating from the gun, McCoy. He's got his man. That's Ertz downfield. A gain of 28 yards there and give him a first down. Man coverage on the left side, so I really like the design of this play because they opened up the field and brought their tight end the other way on a crossing route. That's a lot of ground to cover if you're a defender. I've been there before, unable to stay with his man there. Now McCoy. And his throw here is incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Again, he'll drop to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Connor. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Oh, and that's so close to being intercepted. That could have been a big turnover in overtime if he had held on. Instead, though, it is still fourth down. Once that ball was popped in the air, you could almost hear the silence, the collective breath being held here in the stadium. Let's be honest about it. We both came out of our chairs, didn't we? All right, anytime you see the ball in the air like that, there is that collective rise, the crowd holding its breath, and boy, oh boy, the moment of truth as it comes down. Man, that was something. Everything magnified here in overtime. So he hooked up with a veteran there, and in overtime, that's not a bad idea. Go with the age and the experience. Yeah, because sometimes the young guys, they give you the fresh legs and give you all that bounce. But in this type of a situation, sometimes those legs slow down a little bit as the enormity of the moment overwhelms them. The veteran guys, they tend to come through. To the right side, and he's got more complete. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. So he's able to take it in from three yards out. What an effort there. Sometimes you hold your breath a bit when you see your quarterback diving for the end zone. You don't want him to land on a shoulder wrong or take a big shot. But he looks none the worse for wear here, and that winds up a touchdown. Prater for the extra point, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kicks away. 
No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. Now Jones. Pass complete to Shepard. But he's turning in a nice performance. Remember, he had the touchdown earlier, and this time he's able to beat double coverage to grab it. I think that if he weren't worried about a taunting penalty, he'd run by the opposing team's bench and say, guys, two's not going to be enough. You better get some more guys trying to cover me. He knows how to get open downfield. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Connects with Slayton. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Back-to-back -back completions, and that puts them in enemy territory. And we're always looking for that elusive term momentum, aren't we? And I think they're building it with the back-to-back -back completions. Now they feel like they can either take a shot or continue to build it the way that they're doing now. Safe throws, get it to their playmakers, and see what happens. And he'll get it down here to the 43. I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry. And they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. That's their second and last timeout here in the overtime session. We'll be back. So it all comes down to the right foot of Graham Gano. And now the Cardinals are going to use another timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. And now this game's going to come down to the right leg of their kicker. This to win it in overtime. That's leaking to the right, and he missed it by a foot or two. It's no good. Good starting field position for him as they come up first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. Oh, that's so deflating, Brandon, because you know he was thinking to himself, just give me a shot. Just put us in a position to win the game, and I'll get it done. But this kick, not on target, and we'll keep going here. So on is their kicker, and it's down to this. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And that is no good. He gave it a good run. That wasn't more than a foot or so wide to the left. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. And last time out, another missed field goal, so maybe their confidence wavering a little bit right now in the kicking game. And I'm with you on that. I think at this stage, they'd love to not run him back out there in a tough situation. But let's face it, they may have to. So right now, the head coach is talking to the offense coordinator and saying, call this game like we're going to put it in the end zone. Let's try and take the field goal out of it. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. They'll try the right side here. Barkley. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. So a solid run by Saquon Barkley and another first and 10 here. Now they'll fake it on the jet sweep and instead a handoff up the middle. And a hard working run here as he's got it inside the 20 down to the 17. 129 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. And he got it! The kick is good! And they have won it here in double overtime! That was an excellent come-from-behind victory, Charles, especially there in the fourth quarter. 
both offense and defense were clicking. They're going to feel good about this one. Boy, are they ever, because the deficit they faced certainly wasn't small. They obviously did not give up on that one. And in the end, how about that come from behind victory? They'll cherish this one for a while. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn.